Okay, so Warren Buffett sold 13% of his entire Apple holding. That's crazy. What the hell is going on? We thought he was just trimming when he sold 1% of his holding last quarter. Does this mean that the Warren Buffett and Apple relationship is over? Or is there another reason going on here that has nothing to do with Apple? The answer is that everything in life is always centered around something. Part of it relates to Apple. Part of it doesn't. But it's more complicated than that. As you can see, it's still Warren Buffett's largest asset. Do not misunderstand me. This is a massive transaction worth $140 billion. You may recall the adage, there's only one reason to buy, but a thousand reasons to sell, which quite accurately describes this situation. When asked about it yesterday at the Berkshire Hathaway shareholders meeting, Warren Buffett basically said, look guys, this was a tax-driven sale for two reasons. First, we've accumulated a lot of taxable gains which we need to pay for, which means we need liquidity which means we need cash, and second, I personally believe that the corporate tax rate in the United States will have to increase in 2025. Since we have a large debt and must pay for it, I believe that it is better to pay the taxes now at the current low rate before they rise. All of that is fine, but consider this. If Warren Buffett needed cash to finance a tax bill, he could have sold some shares to raise the necessary funds. That's fine. But why did he sell Apple specifically when he couldn't have sold any of the many other stocks in his portfolio? This video isn't meant to be an attack on Apple or to convince you that the company is the best thing since sliced bread. Rather, it's going to be a more nuanced explanation of why this happened. Speaking of which, let me show you what exactly Warren Buffett is doing with his Apple investment. This is a question that has been on everyone's mind ever since Berkshire Hathaway's annual shareholders meeting last week. This is one of the key stories that came out of it, and I think it's imperative to discuss. Because, as you can see, Berkshire Hathaway sells off almost 13% of its Apple shares. This raises serious questions about what exactly is happening, given Warren Buffett had sold off roughly 1% of his investment in Apple during the previous quarter. This time, however, he is selling off 13%. Thus, is Warren Buffett losing faith in the business? Does he no longer see Apple expanding? Let's look at the Apple stock. Over the last three months, it has decreased by 2%. Over the previous year, it has increased by a modest 9.5%, so nothing spectacular has happened. However, when all is said and done, there are numerous reasons why people sell their assets. The adage, People have one reason to buy a stock, but a thousand reasons to sell one is well known. And it's true that there are many different reasons to sell a stock. So the question is, did he sell Apple because it was a bad company? Or did they have an excuse that had nothing to do with Apple's qualities? Allow me a moment to clarify what I mean. As you can see, Apple is still by far Buffett's largest holding. At $140 billion worth of Apple stock is currently held by Berkshire Hathaway. And as I'll show you in a moment, I don't think he's going to dump those shares. In fact, according to Warren Buffett, when he was questioned about it directly, this is a tax-driven sale because, in essence, they have a very high tax bill for 2023. They need liquidity. They need cash. And this is where they took the cash from. Additionally, he expressed his belief that the United States may raise its corporate income tax rate. In that scenario, it would be prudent for them to extract a small portion of their profits at the discounter rate now, rather than waiting for the U.S. to raise corporate taxes later. Liability once more. We can conjecture about everything he said. Therefore, I think this is the primary driving force behind this. But the real question you should be asking yourself is, if you need capital or liquidity, you can sell a lot of different stocks. Why sell Apple stock, exactly? After all, his cost basis buying is in the 30s. We can probably follow it all the way to this point. So for now, we're speaking about a man who has made four and a half times as much money as he did on his initial investment. It's in a huge profit position. So anything that is making huge profits is something you should constantly think about trimming to create some liquidity. That's the first and legitimate reason, and it has nothing to do with Apple. However, there are issues here that do, and I'll show you that will make it very clear why Apple and nothing else. This does not mean that he will sell Apple going forward.
In fact, when asked about it, he stated that he believes the company will remain his top holding even in 2024, so they do not intend to liquidate the position. Nothing fundamentally changed for this stock, at least not for Berkshire Hathaway, and overall the company appears fantastic, generating $380 billion in revenue over the previous five years. Revenue is up 47%, while income is up 75%. Free cash flow has increased by 70%, so all appears well. This is a very strong company, but there are two major problems. I'm going to give you a little secret. Despite the fact that this is a fantastic company, and that he intends to retain a large portion of the stock on his books, there are two factors that led Warren Buffett to sell the stock. The first is that the company's growth rate has slowed down over the past year, falling by 1%, meaning they are not expanding as quickly as their rivals, which I'll explain in a moment. In addition, their trading price of 28 PE forward and current is a little bit higher than that of their competitors, who are outperforming them in terms of growth and outlook. This is something you should be aware of if you look at these three companies. Let me show you what's happening with Apple, Google, and Meta right now. Sales for Meta have increased by 21%. Over the last year, while sales for Google have increased by 11.7%, Apple's revenue has decreased, so it is not growing as quickly as the other two companies. Actually, if you look at Apple's operating income, which has increased by 92%, 29%, and 5%, it's slowing down. Apple's net income has increased by 113%, 40%, 6.4% declining at a slower rate than rivals' free cash flow, which is somewhat similar to Apple's tail of 18%, 11%, and 4%. They currently rank dead last in every area. If we dig a little further and look at these figures, you'll notice a few things. First, the most expensive firm we have here is Meta, with an 8. At 6.5, you can purchase Google. Next, at 7.4, will you buy Apple? Given that Apple is the third best company among the three in terms of growth, cash flow, and business projections for the next five years, it appears that they are not yet making a significant investment in artificial intelligence. Thus, which would you pick here if they were trading at 7.4? And... You knew you could have Google at 6.5? In terms of PE, Google is trading at 22 PE forward PE, Meta is at 19 PE, and Apple is at 27.6 PE. This means that Apple is the most expensive company overall based on forward PE, and it's also the most expensive on current PE ratios of 25, 25, and 28. Additionally, they're very nearly at the top of the group based on price to sales making them the most expensive company overall based on these ratios, though their profit margin isn't all that much better than Google's, but not as good as Meta and everything else they're dead last. In this instance, it's evident that the business is sound, but it's currently mispriced. In comparison to Meta, it's a little bit on the top heavy side. Warren Buffett, a capital allocator, is saying, look, we need to trim this. The bottom line in this situation is very straightforward. Warren Buffett is still a huge fan of Apple. The company's fundamentals are sound, but unless they figure out a new way to incorporate AI into their operations, the stock will continue to increase at a rapid pace and trade at a premium. And here's where I cut some fat if I'm more Buffett and I've already made four and a half times the profit on my investment. And this is the ideal location to do it. Does this mean that Apple is over, finished, and headed downward? No. It simply means that Berkshire Hathaway should trim at this point, where they have made a lot of gains, it's trading at a ridiculous premium, and it's not performing well right now in comparison to its competitors' comparables. Warren Buffett's decision to sell Apple shares shocked the investing world, leading to questions about his strategy and the future of both Berkshire Hathaway and Apple. However, it's important to remember that Buffett's investment philosophy has always been centered around long-term value and not short-term gains. His decision to sell Apple doesn't necessarily mean the company is in trouble, but rather reflects his assessment of its current valuation and growth prospects. As investors, we can learn valuable lessons from Buffett's move. Firstly, it underscores the importance of constantly reassessing our investments and not becoming too emotionally attached to any particular stock.
Buffett didn't hesitate to sell Apple, despite his long-standing admiration for the company, when he felt it was the right decision for Berkshire Hathaway's portfolio. Secondly, Buffett's sale of Apple shares highlights the need for diversification in our investment portfolios. While Apple has been a highly successful investment for Berkshire Hathaway, Buffett understands the risks of having too much exposure to any single stock. By selling some of its Apple shares, Berkshire Hathaway can reinvest the proceeds into other promising opportunities, thereby spreading its risk and potentially increasing its overall returns. Furthermore, Buffett's move reminds us that even the greatest investors can make mistakes or change their minds. Just because Buffett sold Apple shares doesn't mean he no longer believes in the company's long-term prospects. It simply means he sees better opportunities elsewhere or believes that Apple's current valuation is too high. As investors, we should be humble enough to admit when we've made mistakes and flexible enough to adapt our strategies when new information arises. In conclusion, Warren Buffett's decision to sell Apple shares may have been unexpected, but it's consistent with his investment philosophy of seeking long-term value and managing risk. While some may interpret this move as a sign of trouble for either Berkshire Hathaway or Apple, it's important to view it in the context of Buffett's overall strategy and the constantly evolving nature of the market. As investors, we should take heed of Buffett's example and remain vigilant in our own investment decisions, always focusing on the fundamentals and the long-term prospects of the companies we invest in. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Investing Tutorial for more insightful content on investing strategies and market analysis. Your support helps us grow our community and continue providing valuable information to investors like you. And remember, stay informed, stay diversified, and invest wisely. Until next time, happy investing.